How do you know if an LLM is hallucinating? In this video, I'll be explaining you how to use AI guardrails using Watson Explose Engine. With Watson Explose Engine, you can build flows for AI applications such as Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. When doing RAG, you're asking questions about the document set that you uploaded to a vector database. And then you want to know if the LLM is hallucinating when it produces an answer. With Flows Engine, you can implement guardrails by adding a few steps to your RAG flow. The AI guardrails that are available in Flows Engine will help you to detect hallucination. It's doing this by looking at three values. It's answer relevancy, context relevancy, and finally the groundedness. It's going to compare these values and then come up with a general score. And this score is between zero and one, and it will tell you how much hallucination is in your answer. To implement this flow, we're heading over to VS Code. To set up a new RAG application, I need to download the WXflows CLI, which I already did. I can run the command WXflows init with the interactive flag to set up a new RAG application. It's going to ask me a couple of questions. Uh, most of all, what data set I want to use for context retrieval. And in here, I need to define my path to the data. I've downloaded a version of the Watson X documentation, which is all in HTML. So this is data I scraped from the website. What I want to do, I want to set the path to this directory. And then I'm going to define it is markdown or HTML. I need to set the chunk size and chunk overlap. I'm going to go with the defaults of 550, but you can also use your own values. If you know that your data set requires a lower or higher chunk size, you can easily do this. Just make sure that the chunk size is lower than what your embedding model supports. My collection name is Watson X Docs, which is equal to my directory. It doesn't have to be the same value, but I find it's easy as soon as you start scaling across multiple collections. My endpoint name is wxflows genai slash watson docs. And finally, it's going to process my data and created these V file that contains all my chunks. And these will have a token size of 500 per chunk and then an overlap of 50 tokens. The next step I need to take is deploy this to a vector database. So by default, it's going to put this in a Milvus instance. So this shared database is something we offer as part of the free plan for WXflows. Depending on the size of your data, this might take a couple of minutes. In that time, we're going to look at the TOML file. So this is where all my flows are. There's a basic flow which you can use for retrieval augmented generation, which is called my rack. It consists of five steps. And the first step is to collect your question, the temperature, the name of the collection, those kind of variables. The second step is to retrieve matching documents from a vector database, in this case, Milvus. Then there's a step to take your question, the relevant documents, and put them all together in a prompt. And then there's a step to send your prompt to the LLM for completion. We are using Watson X in this case, and the free plan will give you access to all the different models that are available in Watson X. And then finally, it's going to put all of this together in a final step, which wraps off my answer and some additional parameters. I've uncommented the MyRack flow and I'm going to save this. Then I see that my chunks are uploaded to the vector database, so I can continue by running wxflows deploy, and this will deploy my RAG flow to a live endpoint. The endpoint is printed in your terminal, and I've already set up a bit of JavaScript to use this endpoint. For this, I'm using the JavaScript SDK, which you can download from npm. In order to run this, I can run node in Excel.js, and this will send a request to my newly deployed endpoint together with my API key, because all endpoints are protected by an API key. And then finally, I'm using the SDK to send a request for my flow my rack with the question, what is what's an XAI? And in my terminal, you can see the answer. So what's an XAI is a platform to work with data and models. I can also ask it more broadly, uh, any sort of questions that I have around the Watson X documentation. And if I go back to wxflows.toml, you can see that I have a MyRag with guardrails flow. The steps are pretty similar. Uh, the only difference is there is a step that's called hallucination score. There's a step that's called RAG score message. So these two steps are used to do hallucination detection. So 
So I'm going to uncomment this flow and then run WX flows deploy again. So this will deploy my new flow to the cloud and then I'm able to use it from my JavaScript SDK. Then I'll be running the command node index.js again and this time it returns both the answer of my question and also some scoring related to hallucination detection. As you can see the answer relevance and the context relevance are pretty good and the groundedness also is higher than 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is the default threshold for something to be considered good or bad. This means that the answer to our question is grounded both in my answer and in the context provided by my factor database. I could try and improve the score by changing the model or by changing some of my other values. For example, I could increase the number of relevant documents that need to be returned from the factor database. I can also try and see what happens if I use an unrelated question. So what is Watson XAI? If I change this in how to implement a Fibonacci sequence in Watson X, I probably get a different value for groundedness and answer relevance because the Watson X documentation doesn't explicitly mention a Fibonacci sequence. So I'm expecting there to be a low groundedness score. As you can see, the LM is responding with, doesn't have any built-in function for implementing a Fibonacci sequence. So you can see both my answer and my context relevance are low. And this also means that my groundedness score is really low because the answer isn't grounded in the documentation. Again, I can use a different model, maybe a model that's trained on mathematical calculations to improve this, or I can change my prompting to also improve the context groundedness. And that's all. In this video, you learned how to implement AI guardrails using Watson X Flows Engine. Of course, there's much more to discover. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to your channel. And also, signing up for Watson X Flows Engine is completely free. So sign up today and get started building your own AI applications.